Hello and welcome to our final lesson in our course on material selection using Ashby charts. In today's lesson, we're going to go through an example material selection using our charts. Our objective, select a material for an airplane wing spar. Now, looking at our design, we have some criteria that we need to meet. Our material needs to be stiff, strong, tough, and light. Not stiff enough, the wings will be too flexible. Not strong enough, the wings will yield. Not tough enough, the wings will break. Not light enough, the wings will be too heavy and the plane can't get off the ground. So to start this material selection, let's consider our first two design criteria, stiffness and strength. We're going to use Young's modulus to represent stiffness and yield strength to represent strength when plotting on our Ashby charts. We've done so here where I have Young's modulus on the Y and yield strength on the X. Now, looking at this chart, I can already see that there are some unsuitable materials, such as our foams, which exist down here in this lower left-hand quadrant. So we need to begin screening our materials or removing unsuitable candidates based on our design criteria. Based on some background research, we know we need a minimum Young's modulus of 50 gigapascals and a minimum yield strength of 100 megapascals. On our chart, we want to only consider materials whose values are above both of our minimum. We can do this by drawing a few lines. I'll start with Young's modulus. If I place a line at 50 gigapascals, I want to consider materials that are only above this line. Now I place my line for yield strength at 100 megapascals. For values greater, I'm considering every material to the right of this line. So if we zoom in and remove all unsuitable materials, we end up with 22 candidates, which are shown here. Well, are all of these materials suitable candidates? It can be tough when looking at so many options. And yes, 22 is a lot when you're trying to pick the optimal material for the job. Looking at this list, I can already see a material that's not going to work, silica glass. Glass is not a suitable material for an airplane wing. So that means we need to go back to our design criteria and continue screening to remove all unsuitable materials. So next on our list was toughness or the fracture toughness of our material. Again, based on some background research, we know that we need a minimum value of 15 megapascals per meter to the one half for the fracture toughness of our material for this airplane wing. So, Let's plot fracture toughness in a bar chart where fracture toughness is along the y-axis. If I draw a line at 15 megapascals per meter to the one-half, and I only consider materials above that line, we can see that silica glass and all of our technical ceramics, such as tungsten carbide, are removed from consideration. Looking at this list, we now see that we only have metals and one composite made of carbon fiber left. Now, metals and composites seem quite reasonable for materials to make an airplane out of, so we're actually done with the screening process. But I still have 16 material candidates left. Now I can move on to ranking, where I'm trying to optimize my choice based on the materials I have left. So once again, going back to our design criteria, we see that the material needs to be lightweight. That's our last criteria that we need to consider. So in this case, we're gonna use density to help us do this. So let's plot density as a bar chart. Once again, putting density on the y-axis. Now we're trying to minimize our density and we can see a clear winner, our carbon fiber composites. Metals like gold and tungsten are far too dense and shouldn't be considered. But what about materials like steel or aluminum? All of our ferrous alloys are shown on this chart in teal over here. And aluminum is a very lightweight metal as we can see here, but it's not quite as light as our carbon fiber composites. This ranking doesn't seem very clear. Is there something else we could consider? I could consider price. If I am part of a company that manufactures airplanes, I need to be considering price when I'm choosing a material to build these planes out of. So let's add price to the x-axis and compare density to price for our ranking. Now we start to see something interesting. I want the cheapest and lightest materials, which are located in the bottom left-hand corner of my chart. 
down here. We can see three materials really stand out from the rest of the group. The cheapest but heaviest materials are cast irons, both ductile and gray. The lightest but most expensive is our carbon fiber composite. And somewhere in the middle are aluminum alloys, which are often used in the aerospace industry. Now, this is just a simple example. There are hundreds of grades of aluminum that we would need to consider in order to select our final material for our airplane wing. But we've shown that we're able to use our Ashby charts to quickly and effectively narrow down our material choices, much faster than using tables and numbers. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, can I take this further? Can I use this to logically select materials for advanced applications? And the answer is yes. The Ashby selection methodology, yes, the same Ashby as our Ashby charts, is a logical workflow that allows people to work on complex material selection problems. In fact, Granta Edupack and Granta Selector, two software products in the ANSYS portfolio, were designed to support people using this methodology and to support those using materials visualization. If you want to learn more about the Ashby selection methodology or any of these software tools, please check out our ANSYS innovation course titled Basic Systematic Material Selection. And with that, we've reached the end of our course on material selection using Ashby charts. We've shown that by visualizing material properties in both bar and bubble charts, we're able to enhance our understanding of materials and apply this when selecting materials for various applications. My name's Dr. Caitlin Tyler. Thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you in the next one.